good, yo? It's your boy Ty back here with another video. And in this video today, we are going to be going over the top 10 point guards in NBA 2K21, my team. Now, before we dive into this, I do want to just briefly tell you guys that there's a lot of great point guards in the game. And the list has changed quite a bit within the last two or three weeks. And so it's kind of why I like doing these lists to kind of update you guys on where you guys should prioritize these guys how good they are for their specific price is it's just kind of something i'm going to talk about right it's not the best value cards it's just the best overall point guards in nba 2k21 my, my team if you are new to my channel and have not yet please consider smashing that subscribe button as we're on the road to 70 000 subscribers Starting the list off at number 10 is the only pink diamond you guys will see on this list. I don't want to kind of ruin the list for you, but there's not going to be any more pink diamonds on the list. Six foot five, six six for Alex Cruz. So before we dive into anything else, I've used the card on current gen. I wasn't a massive fan on him. On next gen, I actually got cooked when I was playing against him. So that's just kind of my brief playing experience against Caruso or playing with him. Hot spots from four to five places around the arc. 29 Hall of Famers, 23 on gold, 94 three ball, 95 driving dunk, 96 speed with ball, 94 ball handle, 96 speed acceleration, as well as at 97 lateral quickness, Hall of Fame showtime, Randy Center catch and shoot, hot start. You guys can see all the gold shooting badges here are very, very solid. Playmaker wise, Hall of Fame ankle breaker, dimer, handles today's quick first step, unpluckable. Defensively, very, very solid as well. So through and through, you guys can just see the Alice Cruz. So it's just a very solid all the word, all around point guard. And on current gem with the Hall of Fame showtime, like he should be better than he maybe played for me tendency wise very solid jump shot 17 on quick this jump shot is not one of my favorite release in the game now on very quick it's not terrible but again i think there's a lot of better release in the game quick dribble style and next gen is crucial pro two sides of escape pro three move by the back a lot to like about pink diamond alex caruso here coming in at number 10 Coming in at number nine is a card who I feel like has been in the game longer than he has in Galaxy Opal C Web. Chris Weber, 6'9, 7, 3 wingspan, hot spots from three out of five places around the arc. I feel like when Chris Weber first came out a little over a month ago, he was so good for his time, mainly because we didn't have a lot of tall point guards in the game. And now we've seen it, we're getting more, we're getting more and more tall point guards. And then you guys can just see Chris Weber is just slowly dropping down the list no hot spots from the hash hurt 94 three ball 95 driving dunk 92 speed ball 86 ball handle 94 speed acceleration then 90 lateral quickness good rebounder hall of fame showtime only gold range extender shooting wise obviously the hall of fame catch shoot corner specialist slippery off ball pick wise hall of fame dimer needle through a quick first step bailout and then defensively gonna hold it down now what hurts him obviously is only the gold clamps gold interceptor there's just some of those little things that hurt chris weber he does have gold steady again with his release, it's not that big of an issue. If you are on next gen, that is kind of a bonus. Tendency wise, very solid. Six wise, Kemmer's release on quick. If this release was on very quick, I think you'd see Chris Weber probably in the top six or seven point guards. It's just, I mean, he came out a month ago. We didn't see a lot of very quick releases a month ago. Only this it does have the slash or dribble style that hurts him on next gen. Pro one sides of escape obviously isn't very good. And then just dribble six in general. If you're on current gen, guys, expect to do a lot of bursts with Chris Weber because that's about all he's going to be able to do. Coming in at number eight for me is Galaxy Opal Penny Hardaway. Card that came out only about three weeks ago now at the time you guys are watching this video at the time of recording about three weeks ago, April 23rd. Six foot seven, six ten weeks, man. And talk about a guy with good dribble six. Like if you're from like the park or if you play pro I mean, point guard, stuff like that, you're going to enjoy running Penny Hardaway because the dude can dribble on either gen. I'm pretty confident either gen at least. I know he can dribble on current gen. And I'm pretty sure I've gotten fried with him on next gen too. Six seven. 6, 10 wingspan hot spots from above the break which are the most important ones 37 all the famers 19 on gold 96 three ball 95 driving duck 96 we will 88 ball handle 96 speed acceleration the 96 lateral quickness like stat wise you can make a case he's one of the best point guards in the game has hall of fame showtime range extender no steady playmaker wise again absolutely incredible defensively good enough it's just what it comes down to for me i'll show you guys defensive tendencies are awful that's the first red flag for me and Penny Hardaway. Outside of kind of those defensive tendencies, the only other thing for me is just moving dribble sticks are terrible. In the half court, you won't notice him. He has a pro two size up, has the quick dribble style. I mean, and I don't, I don't know about the rest of this, but I'll tell you this. People that can dribble with Penny Hardaway are so tough to defend. That's just as simple as it can put it. Now, he has to kind of fit your play style, base 75 on very quick or jump shot 75 is a decent release. I don't want to sit here and say it's the best release in the game. It's decent enough. All I'll say is, if you know how to use Penny, you can be super, super efficient with him. He just didn't really fit my play style. 
Coming in here at number seven is our point guard version of Kobe Bryant. Now, remember, this is a list for next gen and current gen both. And so that does play a big part in this. 6'6", six, 6'11", six, six, wingspan, hot spots from everywhere. 97 three ball, 97 driving dunk, 95 speed ball, 94 ball handle, 96 speed acceleration with a 97 lateral quickness. Hall of Fame showtime, range extender, flexible, pick wise, incredible, defensively is absolutely incredible. I could go through all the badges, but you guys get the memo. The dude is all around an incredible card, an incredible stat badge wise, just all around incredible tendencies, six wise. Here's where it gets kind of difficult. Kobe's release is on quick timing. Now, I, there are some people in the community that can green this release on quick timing super, super, uh, you know, efficiently. I'm not one of those people. I struggle with this release on quick. Now, this on very quick, I actually have some very good success with. But on just quick, it, it, it's kind of interesting to me. Has his own Kobe Bryant dribble style. And current gen, it's not a big deal. Next gen, it's not good at all. Current gen, he'd be higher than number seven. Next gen, I just can't put him any higher uh, just because of the current gen, next gen kind of debate. He comes in at number seven. Coming in at number six is Dark Matter Gary Payton. So you might be wondering, well, why is Kobe not higher? Well, on current gen, is Kobe better than Gary Payton? That's a question I'm gonna leave up to you on next gen. I promise you he's not. Six foot four, that's the only downfall. Six, seven wingspan, hot spots from everywhere. 45 Hall of Famers, 18 on gold, 94 three ball, 85 driving duck. Maybe like to see that be a little bit higher. 97 speed ball, 95 ball handle, 97 speed acceleration. Just look at the defensive stats. Interior defensive stats, it doesn't matter. Perimeter defensive stats, the dude can do it all. Decent enough rebounder, mid 80s, Hall of Fame showtime, Randy Stenner, hot zone hunter, a big badge there, hot start, flexible. No steady that can be applied though. Hall of Fame ankle breaker, handles for days, need a third, quick first step space, or to stop and go tight, that's applicable. Defensively, very, very stout as well. So, like I said, Gary Payton can really do it all. Tendency wise, 95 driving dunk tendency, good defensive tendencies as well. Six wise, John Wall's base on very with a very quick timing, very, very solid release all the way around. And I like the release on the, on the Galaxy Opal Gary. Now, this release. It's, it's it's I don't want to say one of the best in the game. It's an easy release to green though. No doubt about that. Quick dribble style, which on next gen is the big reason he's ahead of Kobe Bryant. Pro two sides of escape, pro two between the pro four movement by the back's gotta go. But everything else outside of the pro three or pro four movement by the back is very, very solid on this dark matter Gary Payton card. Coming in here at number five is, I think, our only moments card on the list in Galaxy Opal Lonzo Ball. 6'6", six, 6'9", six, six, wingspan, hot spots from everywhere outside the three-point line. 36 Hall of Fame badges, 15 on gold. 96 three ball, 95 driving duck. And really the reason he's not a dark matter is because of his post moves. Like if those were higher, he would be a dark matter. Playmaking stats, incredible. 97 speed, acceleration as well as vertical. Defensively, very complete. 97 lateral quickness, Hall of Fame showtime, flexible range extender, Tyler Shooter. Only gold, hot zone hunter. I wish I was on Hall of Fame. No steady. Playmaker wise, you guys know most of these point guards are going to have everything you could ask for. Defensively, Hall of Fame clamps, heart crusher, interceptor, intimidator, pickpocket, trapper. Everything you could possibly want outside of pick dodger on Hall of Fame. Tendency wise, very, very solid through and through. Release wise, Lonzo's on very quick. As good as Lonzo's release is, I mean, it's super easy to grip. It's basically kind of, I don't want to say it's like Gary Payne's release, but both those releases are kind of go hand in hand. They're not necessarily the quickest releases in the game. They're not necessarily the best, but they're easy to time, easy to green, and they're decently quick. Just all around solid releases. Quick dribble styles, pro two is size up escape, pro six move by the back, as well as the pro two uh, tween, which is, I mean, there's a, just a lot to like about Lonzo. He's one step ahead of Gary Payton. First of all, he's just a little bit taller. Second of all, he has a way better moving behind the back. Coming in at number four for me is Pink Eye Luka Doncic or the other Luka or the free Luka, whatever Luka you want to plug in here. Six foot seven, six eight wingspan. It's crazy to think a free card is our fourth best point guard in the game. But as far as longevity is, guys, is, is concerned, Luka's got it, man. Three months ago is when he's released and he's still one of the top point guards in the game. Hot spots for everywhere outside the three point line. 26 Hall of Famers, 33 on gold, 95 three ball, 90 driving duck, 95 speed ball, 91 ball handle, 95 speed acceleration with the 94 lateral quickness hall of fame showtime range extender hot start flexible every shooting badge outside of steady pick wise absolutely incredible and defensively he's underrated yes i know he doesn't have a hall of fame clamps but on current gen i know that doesn't matter as much as a lot of people think it does on next gen dbg says it a lot nobody plays defense anyway i play defense but if that's what you want to go by on next gen it doesn't matter quite as much. Six wise, XM's base on quick. Shifty dribble style for Luka Doncic here. Pro two sides of escape. Pro one moving by the back, which is underrated in my opinion. 
Luka is not necessarily that top two or three point guards in the game anymore, but he's one step below at number four. This one pains me right here, but coming in at number three is Dark Matter Grant Hill. I wanted to put him at number two so, so badly, but I just couldn't. Six foot eight, six eleven wingspan, hot spots from everywhere. 42 out of fame badges, 23 on goal, 94 three ball, 98 driving duck, 95 speed ball, 90 ball handle, 98 speed acceleration vertical, as well as a 96 lateral quickness, Hall of Fame showtime range extender, only gold flexible hot zone hunter, hurts him a little bit, no steady, playmaking wise, you couldn't ask for more, defensively, I mean, he just beats people up. Tendency wise, guys, you guys are going to love this Grant Hill card. Whether it's driving dunk tendencies or defensive tendencies, you're just going to love it. Jump shot one on very quick. Now, I'll be the first to say the release isn't as bad as people make it, but it's not a great release. Okay, it's not. It's a hard. It's a hard release to green. That's as simple as I can say it. Now, I did. I used to be pretty decently consistent with it. Right now, I'm just not. That's just the way it is. Quick dribble style for Grant. Pro two sides of escape. Pro three move by the back. Pro two tween. I wanted him to be at number two. I just couldn't quite put him above my guy. Coming in at number two for me is the Dark Matter Enshrined Magic Johnson. I was debating whether to put him at two or three. Ultimately, guys, I do think he is one step ahead of Grant Hill. Six, nine, seven feet, wing, seven foot wingspan, hot spots from everywhere. 48 Hall of Famers with 20 of them on gold. You look at Magic Year 92, three ball, 90 driving dunk, 96 speed ball, 98 ball handle, 96 speed acceleration with the 96 lateral quickness. Hall of Fame Showtime, flexible, range extender, green machine, tire shooter, volume shooter. Playmaker wise, absolutely incredible. Everything on hop besides Dream Shake. And look at all the defensive badges. Now, more than anything, guys, the big thing on current gem for this magic is now he can run. They made a Magic Johnson that doesn't jog and protect the ball up the court, which is just absolutely crucial. 100 driving dunk tendency, great defensive tendencies. Magic Johnson's base on very quick. Easy release to green. It's kind of similar to the Ben Simmons type release. Pro two sides of escape. Pro three moving behind the back with the quick dribble style. Either way, guys, whether you're current gen or next gen, I do think Magic Johnson is widely considered a top two point guard. Was there ever really a question? Coming in at number one is Dark Matter Ben Simmons. It's crazy to think this card came out nearly a month ago and is still the top point guard in NBA 2K21. Six foot ten, seven feet wingspan, hot spots from everywhere. 94 three ball, 95 driving dunk, 95 speed ball, 90 ball handle, 96 speed acceleration with a 97 lateral quickness. Has the Hall of Fame showtime. Hall of Fame range, flexible, no steady, playmaker wise, absolutely incredible. Defensively, this is really where Ben Simmons makes his, his kind of difference, right? He's obviously incredible in the offense, man, but defensively, that's where he's just absolutely soup. Tendency wise, incredible. Six wise, Ben Simmons release on very quick. It's such an easy release to time a green. Literally, if you can't green with Ben Simmons, it's a you problem. It's not a Ben Simmons problem. Quick dribble style, pro two sides of escape. He can do that on next gen current gen. He's not going to be able to. Pro eight tween, pro two uh, moving behind the back, which is terrible. Current gen guys, dribble six, there's not that much there. Outside of the burst, it's just not really it for Ben Simmons. But I will say next gen, his dribble six are solid. Pro eight on next gen is absolutely incredible. Either either gen, guys, I would be surprised if the majority of people did not have Ben Simmons as their top point guard in the game. All right, that is going to wrap it up for our top 10 point guard video today. If you didn't see your favorite point guard, such as a Russell Westbrook or a Derrick Rose, I'm sorry. Remember, this is only the best of the best, and this is also just my strictly opinion. But comment yours down below. Who was I too high on? Who was I too low on? Drop a like on the video. Subscribe if you are new. And as always, man, I love you guys, and have a blessed day.